Are you ready? Yes, ready. Great. So welcome everyone. I'm Tom Friedland. I'm the president of the Berkeley City Club. My wife Sandy is sitting next to me and she's going to introduce this evening's program. I want to uh, first of all welcome all of the City Club members and I hope that this evening is not going to be frustrating because all of us have been uh, chomping a bit to get back into our swimming pool and to listen to how great it is to swim may be more irritating than uh, happy news. So I hope that uh, that won't happen to you tonight and that you'll enjoy the program. Let me turn my attention for a minute to non-club city club members. Any of you who are in the Bay Area and not yet a city club member, I'd like to invite you to consider joining us at the city club. We have a fabulous swimming pool that you'll hear well, I guess you won't hear too much talk about our swimming pool tonight, but uh, it's a Julia Morgan designed pool that is uh, that harkens the San, San Simeon pool if you've been there. We have a great restaurant, we have a hotel, and I'll uh, kind of direct uh, my attention now to people who are not in the Bay Area. I want to encourage you when you do come to the Bay Area to stay at our hotel and eat at our fabulous restaurant. And with that, I will turn the okay. microphone over to Sandy. Okay, you're not going to tell them. Hi, I just need to add one thing to what Tom said. Our building is not just a building. It was designed by the first female architect in California. Her name is Julia Morgan, for those of you who might be architecture buffs. And it's known as the Little Castle because she was working on the Berkeley City Club building at the same time she was doing San Simeon. And it has many of the same motifs inside on a much smaller scale. But it's a, it's a pleasure to be in a building like that and we get a lot of guests and a lot of weddings because they want that architectural atmosphere. Okay, so it's my really great pleasure to start this program. Um, so it turns out that Bonnie Soy went to school with my son and daughter-in-law and a few, I don't know, maybe a month or so ago they said there's this great new book out about swimming. You guys are going to love it. And by the way, she lives in Berkeley. <laughs> so we quickly lined her up to do this realizing that she could have lived in France or Germany or anywhere, we could still have gotten her here, but it's a special pleasure to know that Bonnie lives, in the, lives and swims in the Bay Area. She um, lives, swims, and surfs in the Bay Area. Uh, she's an award-winning author and a longtime contributor to the New York Times and the California Sunday Magazine. She does frequent live storytelling events, so I know that she's good on, on her feet on the stage. Um, her first book, America Chinatown, A People's History of Five Neighborhoods, won a 2009, 2010 Asian Pacific American Literature Award, or the award. Uh, her new book, Why We Swim, has been getting fabulous reviews, um, and all the reviews have great pull quotes, but the one that tickled me the most, I think, recently was, um, Why We Swim is a fascinating and beautifully written love letter to water. And I've been telling my friends that those of them who swim will really enjoy listening to that. And those of them who do not swim will find out why we do swim. <laughs> so it'll be something that for all of us to share in. Um, so when we, Bonnie said she would much rather be in conversation with someone rather than just speak. And before I could exhale, I thought of, I thought of Susan Helmrich, who was a neighbor and a sort of acquaintance. We passed back and forth a lot, but I, she's written up in so many magazines and newspapers that I knew much more about her than she knew about me. And so I emailed her and before the ink was dry in the email, she wrote back, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> she already had the book. She'd already lis listened to another interview online. And um, so it was really a match made in heaven. So Susan, um, is a lifelong swimmer. She's the San Francisco Bay co-event director of Swim Across America. She's a health and wellness coach. And by the way, she's a survivor of three serious bouts of cancer. Um, she also has a doctorate in epidemiology and she spent years researching how over-the-counter and prescription medications affect women's health. And more recently on how physical activity influences health and well-being. Um, by one account, maybe it was her mother, said that she's one of the best swimmers in the world in her age group. So in case you doubt that, in 2018, she swam at least, at least 700 miles. 
So without further ado, I'd like to share with all of you a conversation between Bonnie and Susan. And those of, we've got quite a few people signed on. So if you have questions, you can start texting them to us um, and we'll deal with them after they're done. There's also a little function on the very bottom of your screen. There's both chat, that's the way to send us a message. And there's also something called participants. And if you click on participants, I think it has a little um, symbol of raising your hand. So that's another way to let us know you have a question. But the easiest is if you click on chat and send, um, send Tom and Sandy or one of the speakers a question and then we'll deal with them at the end of the talk. So it's a pleasure to have all of you here and with no further ado, go ahead. Hi everyone, we're so glad to be here tonight with you and um, you know, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you, Tom and Sandy for hosting us. Thank you, Susan, for being in conversation tonight. And you know, it's a pretty tumultuous time and we certainly couldn't have foreseen a lot of these things, but um, we're hoping that tonight is a little bit of a, you know, an aquatic respite, um, so to speak, from, from all of the things that are going on. And um, thank you for being here. And I wanna thank you, Sandy, too, and Tom for putting us together. It was a match made in heaven. I had already had the book. I didn't know Bonnie lived in Berkeley. And when we met, we met on Zoom. <laughs> Um, it, there, we had so many things. We just, we talked for an hour nonstop and we didn't even get to this part of what we were going to talk about. So thank you. And I too hope that this brings a little distraction to all of us during this just ho horrible time. And, um, you know, we hope we can entertain you a little bit. And the book is a joy. I, I, I found myself just uh, relating to it and loving every single thing I read and learned so much because of the history and the science, which I didn't know hardly anything. But I want to ask you, um, Bonnie, what motivated you to write this book? I think that um, I will always trace it back to um, the origin story of my family, which is that my parents met in a swimming pool in Hong Kong, and my dad was a lifeguard. And I, in earlier interviews, I would talk about how my mom was this great swimmer, and she was, you know, uh, just happened to be at the pool. My mom um, quickly said, you know, I knew how to swim. I was okay, but I was taking lessons, okay? I was taking lessons. <laughs> because in my memory, you know, growing up in the pool with my mom was that she was always like, dominating in the lane next to us and I think that uh she would she just was a little bit bashful about me painting her that way so I will say that she was taking lessons with her sister at the pool with my dad you know that my dad was the lifeguard there and so of course it was you know two folks having the hots for each other in the pool I mean it's like the tale as old as time right but um in terms of like why I wanted to write this book I think that over you know the last 40 years I have been um you know, I'm a lifelong swimmer. I grew up um, in the pool in Jones Beach um, in New York um, and our family, that was how our family spent time together. And um, over the years through swimming lessons and swim team and becoming a lifeguard myself and, you know, then learning how to swim, not under a coach, not under the the sort of enforced tutelage of someone else was something that I think was pretty extraordinary to me because, um, I remember sw swimming in college, you know, for the first time where no one was telling me what to do. And then there was this freedom in that, this, this thing, this portal that opened actually to another way of being in the water that I just really enjoy. And so um, I think that over the years, I've realized that swimming is a way to get through a lot of hard things and, um, and also joyous things. Like every day I get in the water this morning, I went swimming in San Francisco Bay and it, as we all are feeling right now, it's been a really crazy and tumultuous time and there's so much to, to, to deal us. There's a fire hose of just um, news and not all of it, um, well, most of it not very positive. And so how do we handle all that? And I find that swimming is my way of, of, of I guess, absorbing it. I don't want to say escaping from it because I think that it is a way of um, being with myself in the water and being with my thoughts and understanding that, um, you know, we, we will get through these things, but how is it, it's my way of being thoughtful, I guess, is, is, is what it is. And so this book 
That's a long way of saying that, um, you know, I've been thinking a lot about swimming right now and what it means to me to have it now. And I think it's like right now, it's a way to, to find um, some peace and to find some time to like digest all of these things. You write about the healing effects of swimming beautifully. Yeah. And it was the, you know, when I read that sentence, it was like, yes, that's exactly it. Could you read that yeah. sentence? Sure. Okay. So that's from the introduction of the book. And so I talk about what the book is, right? So um, I will read that to you. Um, this book is an investigation of what seduces us to water, despite its dangers and why we come back to it again and again. It's clear to me that once we can swim for survival, swimming can be so much more. The act of swimming can be one of healing and health, a way to well-being. Swimming together can be a way to find community through a team, a club, or a shared beloved body of water. We have only to watch each other in water to know that it creates the space for play. If we get good enough at the thing, it can be an engine of competition, a way to test our mettle in the pool or open water. Swimming is about the mind too. To find rhythm in the water is to discover a new way of being in the world through flow. This is about our human relationship to water and how immersion can open our imaginations. And I'll show you the cover of the book. Very <laughs> shiny. <laughs> so for all of you swimmers out there, that I think is the essence, I think for all of us, Bonnie hits on every single aspect of swimming, whether we do it for competition or for flow or for community or for solace, whatever it is, it's all there in that, even if you just read that one part of the introduction, it's so you captured it, it's beautiful. But I wanna know um, now that none, many of us cannot swim, some of you in other parts of the world might be in pools, but we are not. What are you missing most about, I, I know you're swimming in the bay, but what are you missing most about pool swimming? You know, I'm missing the um, ability to go on autopilot, you know, so, so the pool is very different from open water in that it's a circumscribed shape and you know where it is, where it begins and where it ends, it's a controlled environment. And so in that way, you can um, release yourself to have your body be do its practice thing and then your mind can go into a more meditative mode i think that swimming in open water and so i was mentioning that i'm swimming in san francisco bay i don't normally do that on a regular basis i'm, I'm mostly like in the albany aquatic center at eight in the morning and, or surfing at ocean beach or pacifica and so i find my wildness in the ocean but i find peace and meditation and calm in the pool mm -hmm. and i really miss my community my swim community is what i really really miss i miss being in the um in the lane with my team i swim with the albany armada and i know um there are some members here right now including sabina i saw you on there um and so uh i miss that feeling of you're doing a thing together you have your tribe you might not actually know that much about uh, we always talk about this uh my fellow swimmers and i were where you know you see swimmers your friends in swimsuits and caps and goggles and on the street you would not recognize them necessarily or you don't know so much about them but that um you know in the pool you know them in a very certain way in a very intimate way um and in a very um you know, communal way, you know, you are, you're in your mind, in your lane, in your, you know, doing what you're doing when you're swimming, but you are sharing something, you're all connected because you're all in that water together. And so there's something really special about that, especially if you swim on a team and a master's team as I do, that there is a really great um, camaraderie that comes from that. And I miss that. I miss that a lot. You and I, when we first talked, we talked a lot about locker rooms and how yes. <laughs> like I've always wanted to write a book called lessons learned in the locker room from people. You learn lessons from people you don't even know, but you see them naked, <laughs> you know, they're in a few rows away and someone will shout something and you'll say, really? Or does anyone know of a, of a plumber or whatever, but you can learn so much in the locker it's room. So it's so intimate. It's so trusting. It's so, um, I, you know, we talked about this um, before, but I have 
been writing about this and thinking about it for a while and just those uh, when I swim in the mornings I usually am uh, swimming at the same time as this aqua aerobics class and I've seen these women in the locker room most mornings for like six years you know and and just like falling into the room with a conversation and you know like whose kids are visiting whose grandkids are visiting you know how everybody's feeling what ailments what solutions what and it's so beautiful and it's such a celebration i keep i keep thinking about it as this you know the locker room as this tableau on aging but that it is like knowledge passed down passed down passed down and I don't know what the guy's locker room is like, but I know that the ladies locker room is a really special place. And I miss that, you know, sort of hen house action going on where people um, really support each other. And um, it's, I know that those people also um, benefit so much from the water and from the access to the pool every day. And that's how they get their exercise, how they get their community, how they get so much that I think now it, they're really feeling that loss pretty hard. And so um, Susan, you and I talked about that before, but that it's, um, I just, I wish everyone a speedy return to the water because I know that uh, for a lot of uh, people in the community that that's, the pool is really the only way to, for them to get that. And think of that replicated all across the country. How many of us are missing our, our, our people in the locker room, in the pool? And, you know, it's just, it's so sad. And I think if you're not part of that, you don't, you know, there's no way you could imagine what, it, what that loss is. But it's, it's a huge loss. Um, and I just want to shift a little bit to you talk about all the different in your book even there's cold water swimmers there's fast swimmers there's open water swimmers there's so many like in and of itself you could be a swimmer but this swimmer won't relate at all to that swimmer like i have pool sprinting friends swimmers who could not ever relate to kim chambers right they're like different <laughs> Different universe. Different species, yeah. But, I, you know, I really did want this book to, okay, so I set this book up posing a question, why we swim. But I, and then the way the structure of the book is, is that, you know, five different ways we can answer that question. So running through survival, first and foremost, and then, you know, well-being, community competition and flow. But what I really wanted to do with this book on a, on a just top, you know, 40,000 foot level is that I wanted it to have something that would speak to you whether or not you called yourself a swimmer or not you know whether you swim in a pool or the ocean or in a bay or you seek wild water or you're very much you have a backyard pool and that's where you go um that you know whether you you love the water or you fear it that that there is some we on some instinctive level have a relationship with the water whether it's love or hate or, or it's actually more it's love and feel comfortable and fear is is sort of the more of the polar like you have been scarred by some you know childhood incident or some experience where you you really almost drowned and i think that we are very much scarred by that and we remember it very vividly and so we hesitate to put ourselves back in those places but i wanted this book to meet all of those people wherever they are and to then pull them in gently and then not so gently to into the story of the thing into that that every section has a, a story and characters and a narrative to kind of pull you into immerse you, you into the history and the culture and just like around the world because I know that to share knowledge the best way to do that is tell a good story and so that's what I really wanted to do and um, I hope that there is something here for everyone and I, I think the biggest compliments that I've gotten are that lifelong swimmers read it and they say you know this book is is, is the book that I've been wanting because there's all these other stupid books about running and there's no books for us swimmers. And um, that's me on one level. And then there are the, uh, the, the other biggest compliment that I get is that people come up to me and they say, I'm so afraid of the water. I've always wanted to be a, a good swimmer. I've always wanted to 
to learn to do that, I actually just started taking lessons and I'm, you know, as an adult because of X, Y, and Z that happened to me and that this book made me want to swim. So I think those are the two responses actually that I love the most, but then there's also, of course, like just that I, that I want people who just want to learn about something that's really deeply human, which is that our, we are not, um, instinctively we're not born knowing how to swim and yet we are all drawn to the water and we all have this pull to it because of we that we need it um and that also we are wired to respond to certain set points in the environment where blue spaces are the ones where we find joy and and calm and relaxation and beauty in going to those places so i think that i wanted to hit all of those levels in the book you totally did. I mean, on, on, on that, those levels and so much more, just for me, I mean, reading about the samurai swimmers and, you know, that was just a whole new revelation. I had no idea. And um, just the pool in Baghdad that the soldiers were swimming in. I mean, just so many, you did so much research about swimming. It was quite extraordinary. And um, I don't want to give it all away, but um, <laughs> what? where are your three most favorite places to swim? Ooh. I know you've been all over the world swimming. Um, one of my favorite places to swim is um, Ala Moana Beach Park in Oahu, in Honolulu, basically. It's, it's downtown Honolulu. Like, it really is downtown. And it's crazy because it's just this, it's almost like a, giant pool it is so calm it's so protected by the breakers um and yet people will you know you can see the surfers kind of paddle out beyond the reef and um you know they'll they'll be surfing out there but inside this protected reef is just this huge beautiful aquamarine expanse of of water and the sand it's just really really beautiful um that's one of my favorite places to swim because you just think you turn one way and you see the surface you turn the other way you see you know, the skyline and then, you know, all of the, the, um, brides and grooms. <laughs> getting I was just wedding. there. I was just there. It is beautiful. You were? <laughs> yeah. I mean, not just, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. February, I was there. But it is really this like kind of magical, weird place. And I love swimming there. Um, I love also, um, this, the, I remember this rooftop pool in, in Hong Kong, I, I was staying in a hotel, I think it was the Intercontinental, um, but it was, you, it is just a strange experience to be swimming and floating on your back and then seeing just skyscraper spires all around you because the downtown skyline is so, I think what I love about those two places is that they're very different, but that they are so of their place, right? So they're so, um, you know that where you are when you're swimming and and there's something really cool about that and how that informs just like what it's like to be there and three i asked for three. Oh, three. um uh <laughs> um i guess you know bondi beach was cool <laughs> that was, i think that's my favorite yeah in the iceberg pool yeah it's a really um i studied in sydney as a an undergrad um for during my junior year and I just feel like that it was a really gorgeous place to to be among people who love the water who love the coast who just um and 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 that was my tribe you know that whole country really was my tribe and I also learned while I was there that like one in three people got skin cancer and so that was also a reason to remember to wear sunscreen <laughs> yes um do we want to answer some of these questions I'm seeing sure. yeah, let's pop up um, well, Sandy lets us know that uh, the locker rooms at the Berkeley <laughs> City Club are co-ed. Oh, really? <laughs> so oh, how interesting, interesting that must be. <laughs> I want to hear, okay, at, at some point during this, I want to hear what people say about that. <laughs> so tell uh, us about that. That's great. I did not know I'm not that. sure we can unmute. Can, you can't hear us, right? Yes, we can. Oh, we can. We can hear you. So the Berkeley City Club locker rooms are not the reason you swim at the Berkeley City Club. <laughs> However, it's so it's like being with your family. It's divided down the middle. The, the doors of the locker room hide. You can still see people's feet, sort of, or their heads a little bit. 
and there's locker rooms for, or there's showers for men and showers for women, but the, um, the open spaces are shared, the mirrors, the hair dryers, and the toilets are shut off, but um, it works really, really well, and we have a lot of camaraderie, but it is not a hen party. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw that Linda said, I swim at City Club, and I dislike the co-ed locker room. And I, I, I have taken a few guests there who forget and come walking out of their, their little changing area wrapped in a towel, and I have to say, no, 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 go right back in. <laughs> That is so, wow. I mean, I think that, um, I think if you are used to it and you know going in, but that's one thing, but to sort of be, I don't know, it's interesting because I think that there is something really um, different about it being, you know, in my locker room that it's only all women. You know, I think it would be really different if it was co-ed. Um, let's see, what, uh, okay, where to swim? Right, We're, oh, with pools closed. So um, I see that someone's at Brooklyn Marine Aquatic Park. I've been swimming at Keller Cove and Keller Cove is fantastic. Um, I actually had never swum there before pandemic, but it's great because it's so close. It's only, you know, 12 minutes from my house and it's, um, it's really calm, it's very protected. Uh, it's, a, it's not very crowded and um, there's a pretty friendly swim crew out there who you will generally run into. Um, how does the practice of writing align with the practice of swimming? That's a really great question. Um, I think in the, the practice of writing is one of discipline. And I think certainly swimming is a, is a practice of discipline as well. Um, I think that for, at least for me, it was interesting to merge the two in this book. I would, I would have, you know, I'd be writing the section of the book that's about flow. And what are you thinking about when you're swimming and sort of what does that do to your mind and your body? And I would go in the pool and I would start asking myself, what am I thinking about right now? What am I? Um, it was a very weird thing to interrogate the thing as I was doing it and then kind of go back to my desk. But I often would have these wonderful um, moments of enlightenment and just knowing that um, that very specific sensory scenes would go into the book. And I loved that. I loved, um, I, I knew that with a book about swimming, I wanted it, you to get a sense of what it felt like to do that. And I, um, I really tried to be evocative about what it was like to swim with Kim Chambers in San Francisco Bay. So for all of you who don't know her, Kim Chambers was the first woman to swim from the Farallons to San Francisco. And she, has an amazing story. She anchors the well-being section about her, her, she only just started swimming when she, after she almost lost her leg due to an ampu amputation after an accident. And um, she became one of the foremost long distance swimmers in the world. She was the sixth person to complete the Ocean Seven uh, open water swims. It's basically the seven summits of mountaineering for swimming. Um, and I think that just, being able to be attentive to the details uh, while swimming and then kind of translating the, that back to writing was something that I really wanted to do. And I, and I loved thinking about those things together, actually. Um, I see that Caroline asks, where is your book available? Wherever books are sold. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that uh, if you can support local booksellers like Mrs. Dalloway's, Mrs. Dalloway's now delivers to your doorstep. So you can order the book online from Mrs. Dalloway's and, sh and um, the uh, booksellers will deliver the books free of charge to where wherever you live in, in Berkeley or Oakland. Um, also bookshop.org is a wonderful uh, online uh, bookshop that uh, supports independent bookstores as well. Um, let's see, what else? Is that all the questions? Um, what time of day do you most like to swim? Oh, the morning, hands down. I think I just need to get it out of the way. <laughs> that makes it sound like a bad thing, but I, I think that it just sets me up for the rest of the day. I, I think about today. And I think, Susan, you are also a morning swimmer, right? I'm a morning swimmer, except now I'm going to confess to the world <laughs> I am swimming in a friend's pool. Um, and so I'm trying to be respectful of their time and their how you know their home and not wanting to go before breakfast when they might be eating breakfast outside so 
Now I'm swimming more in the afternoon. It's not the same. It is not the same, but um, I am a morning swimmer. And I, I too, it sets up my day. So yeah. no matter what else I have planned or not planned, I know that I've accomplished <laughs> something. <laughs> in right. The it just feels like, I, I mean, I think about how it just smooths my feathers back a little bit. And not to say that they don't get ruffled up later in the day if I, if I, you know, if they, if the need happens, but that at least from the beginning that that's where I'm starting. And I think that that just, um, yeah, that makes sense. So someone is asking, can Bonnie read another passage, please? A favorite one. Favorite one. That's so hard. Um, okay. Let me see. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> oh, you know what I'll talk? I'll, I'll read from, I will read from um, what? Swimming in Open Water versus, um, yeah, Swimming in Open Water. Okay. This is actually about swimming uh, at Polahale Beach in Kauai. Years ago, a close friend and I cemented a friendship that began in college by splashing our way around Hawaii, starting on his home island of Oahu. We visited other islands too, like Hawaii, where we waded into the Pacific at Polehale Beach, a remote 17 mile stretch of white sand at the end of a long rutted dirt road that seemed as far away as you can get from anywhere. We swam in that heaving body of aquamarine and what I remember most is the profound feeling that the ocean water had weight in the years since I've come to appreciate open water, an ocean, a lake big enough to generate its own waves as its own animal, I see swimming as a way to get to know a place with an intimacy that I otherwise wouldn't have. The pleasures of swimming in a place can be everyday, routine, familiar. In 1779, a lieutenant of Captain James Cook's admired the native Hawaiian's swimming abilities with an entry in his ship's log. The women could swim off to the ship and continue half a day in the water. In Hawaiian, Polynesian, and other enduring island cultures of the Pacific, he observed, the men, women, and children seemed almost amphibious from birth. This is as lovely a description of the freewheeling freedom of swimmers as any I have come across. So beautiful. Um, let's see. Do you wear a wetsuit in the bay? If so, how does that change your relation to the water? Uh, it doesn't feel as good, but it feels warmer. <laughs> I mean, that's basically it. I just, um, you know, today I swam with a wetsuit and it's been pretty warm lately, but I also feel, I, I have swum, and for those of you who've read the book know that I've swum in um, San Francisco Bay without a wetsuit and that was a big thing for me and, and have done it, and I've done it several times, but I also, um, in this particular time too of, of COVID that I think that I shouldn't risk swimming without a wetsuit because I haven't been doing it that much regularly and, and your body just does adapt quite well over time to the cold water and um, I didn't want to be someone who got in trouble because I wanted to not wear a wetsuit you know in, in the water so I think for now unless you're you know the dolphin club south end rowing club diehards and faithful that you um that you uh do it regularly and and know how to read your body uh and know that your body can 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 deal with it then i think that for me i just you know i just want to be safe so um since we've met uh many things have happened many many of us in the swimming world have come together through Bonnie and thank you so much, Sandy. And while we were getting together, Bonnie was also meeting with other directors of Swim Across America, which was kind of just amazing uh, coincidence. And they didn't know we had this scheduled and anyway. So we've talked to Bonnie a lot about one of the taglines for Swim Across America is we, we always ask people why they swim. And we use the Why I Swim story all over the country for each of our events. And we have a Why I Swim Wednesday and, and, 
Anyway, why I swim is a very important piece of Swim Across America. So Bonnie and I talked and I have hundreds of why I swim stories, but we decided I would read my why I swim story to kind of pull in my connection to, with Swim Across America to Bonnie's book. So it's not that long, but um, I had to fix the, the numbers of years a little bit and you'll see why. Uh, this year, I will celebrate 11 years since my last surgery for neuroendocrine pancreatic cancer. It is also 22 years since a tumor in my lung was removed and 43 years since I underwent a 10 and a half hour surgery for vaginal cancer when I was 21 years old. That is why I swim. I swim because I can and because so many others cannot. I swim because I am one of the lucky ones who has benefited from extraordinary research and great medical care, which have saved my life each time I had cancer. I swim because I am so lucky to have made it through three different cancers, nine major surgeries, and way too many hospitalizations to even count. And I've come out the other side. I swim because 11 years ago, I spent 23 days in the Stanford Hospital, unable to eat, and I thought I would never swim again. That is why I swim and work tirelessly for an organization I love, Swim Across America. As the San Francisco Bay Area co-event director, my goal is to help fund the scientists and physicians here in the Bay Area who are working so hard to find a cure and to hopefully one day cure all children diagnosed with pediatric cancer. I swim for so many people who have suffered from and died of cancer. There are far too many to name and I swim in their honor and in their memory. I work for Swim Across America because it is my small way of giving something back to the universe because for whatever reason, I am one of the lucky ones. In my own way, I hope to inspire, motivate, and encourage others to keep trying and keep going even when it seems hopeless. In my lifetime, I have personally seen how far we have progressed in cancer treatment and I am proud to contribute, contribute to it in any possible way to the goal of successfully curing all children diagnosed with this dreaded disease. It is the least I can do. Oh, and one more thing. I swim because I love to swim. So that is my why I swim story. And um, I just connected to every single aspect of your book in so many ways. And, um, I just want to thank you for writing it. Um, and, and thank you for sharing your why I swim story. Yeah. I just feel like that was something that we all um, needed to hear right now, you know, like resilience, like getting through hard things. Um, we need to know that, that we're going to do that. You know, it's, it's a really, so thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And things do feel a little bit hopeless right now. Um, particularly for all, for those of us who need to swim to kind of yeah, yeah. I think that there's a it's a it's a very tough um, it's a difficult time for swimmers who as we have talked about um, so much tonight that who really rely on uh, the water to help them get through things you know and and um, I also, this is going to be a very small consolation, but to be, be able to at least go to see water, to see it, listen to it, be near it is, is still very beneficial. So if you can do that, I was talking to Wallace Nichols, who is, for many of you probably know his book, Blue Mind, and it came out some years ago, but he has been saying, he told me, you know, tell people that they can still visit domestic waters. And, and he said, by domestic waters, I mean, take a bath, <laughs> you know, <laughs> get a shower, like, you know, watch a great surf video, just um, do the things that bring you joy. And I think that overall is something that we all need to be doing too because it's really easy to like doom scroll and spiral down into a place where you just feel like everything is hopeless and really we need to have the hope to get through on the other side of all of this everything that's happening right now we need to um to have the hope to be active to push through and be able to do the things that we need to do to get on the other side of this and so i think that gives us strength um so in our small way we we hope to 
um, I guess to give people hope and give people beauty and joy. So I think that I hope this book does that. It definitely does. Um, there was one, there was one question we missed, which was about how to get involved with master swimming, I think. Did you guys see that one? Oh, and then where uh, to swim besides Keller Cove. I think someone else mentioned this, um, but aquatic park. So if you're, depending on where you are, of course, um, uh, people are also swimming at China Beach. Um, but uh, if you're in San Francisco, aquatic park is a great place to do it because it's very protected. Um, and if you're in the East Bay, people have been swimming at, uh, in Alameda at Crown Beach and at uh, Keller Cove, as we mentioned, in Richmond, Point Richmond. And Treasure Island has a beach. And Treasure Island, I know. We talked about that, right? I think that we need to, you know, some people have been going there and, and you get this great view of the Bay Bridge. And so I think also that when you swim in these places, you um, get to have an added dose of awe, which is, I read about this a little bit in the book, but that that really helps us uh it has the, all the science points to how experiencing awe helps you to feel you know to be more generous <laughs> you know to be a better person like actually literally makes you want to help people more and so why not do that why not work that into your exercise <laughs> regimen you know and and um i just think that all of these you know in the course of reporting the this book, not only finding these really interesting stories, um, but to uh, find out the research and the science that supports why we should be swimming, you know, or why that we should have some working relationship with the water. Sabina has a question. What's Sabina's <laughs> question? <laughs> um, about your boys and their Legos something Let's see. oh they made a lego movie yes they made a lego movie a stop action animation for a book trailer for the book they made a bunch of them actually they're ridiculous um what did she say how much of your passion for water is passed on to them you know what someone just asked me this today um one of my greatest joys is that when they draw pictures of me they draw me on a surfboard or <laughs> swimming <laughs> And, you know, there's some dolphins jumping around and uh, it's uh, that they know me, that they know that that's something that I is so important to me and part of who I am and that they uh, also love the water. They love to, you know, be in the pool. They love to swim in the ocean and splash around and body surf. And I, um, I, I really feel that, you know, in this pandemic time that one of the greatest pains for me is to see them be unable to get in the water on a regular basis because they had been really um, settling into swim team and also uh, just kind of forgetting themselves when they do it, you know, just having it be a very um, natural way to be natural to them. Now second nature, I think. And so I think I have always wanted that for them and I think that that's happening and and has been happening and when I see them do you know dry land zoom swim practice it's heartbreaking <laughs> and also I think okay it's, they need some exercise so it's okay um, but they miss the water um, my seven-year-old actually said to me uh, the other day he said I don't feel like myself when I'm not oh, able to yeah. swim so, yeah. there's a comment by from um, Dr. Rob Goldsby Dr. Rob Goldsby is our beneficiary who at UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital runs the, survive, the Pediatric Cancer Survivorship Program. And we fund that program through our event. And he writes, beautiful and so inspiring. Both of you agree with the need to work together to make a difference. Look forward to reading the book, Keep Swimming, Love to You All. So that was a, to you and, and to you. I think there was one more. So there, there's one question from Joan. Let me ask it. Um, did you ever, I guess this is for Bonnie, did you ever hit a point in the writing where you got stuck or had a hard time articulating a particular point about swimming? Yeah, you know what? Actually, the final section of the book is called Flow. So all the sections that came before, survival, well-being, 
community and competition. Each of the, I'm a journalist, you know, so I am usually out reporting stories about other people. And I found those first four sections of the book so easy to write because I was out telling, I was out spending time with people and kind of reporting back and then writing the scenes and, and, and describing um, the research and the, in the history and the culture. And then I got to the flow section of the book, which is so much more um, like an ideas section, ideas kind of writing. It's essayistic, it's impressionistic, it's about what happens to us in water, why it benefits our brains, why is meditation, why creativity, why poets, you know, all of these things that were sort of like loosey-goosey. And that was a really hard, I hit the wall with that section. And it was, um, now actually people tell me that that's their favorite section of the book, but I remember feeling that there was a little bit of a hard transition to try to integrate that kind of writing and thinking into a book that is um, very much about stories and how do you transition from like a story about a person and something that happened to them and what it means to them to something that's you know larger about ideas and kind of connecting to us on a human level and so I said how do I do this I have to then report from my mind kind of you know like I was telling you earlier about being in the pool in the mornings and swimming and then interrogating myself and noticing things and wondering what I'm thinking about. And then I notice that the bird is flying overhead and thinking how many birds poop in the pool every day? Where does that poop go? You know, just to actually like record those things and pull them down from the sky and think like, is this worth saying? And I think there is something we're saying about reporting from your mind, reporting from your experience um you know when you are trying to interrogate a thing because that's what makes it feel personal that's what makes it feel that um other people know that you are a person on the other side of this thing so i that was the hard part but i actually really enjoyed at the end writing it even though punching through was horrible <laughs> as you know it happens it, it does happen but it was really um enjoy enjoyable to do okay we have one more question and then i think we're going to uh, sadly say goodbye to you two amazing women um let's see are there this is from bob um uh, are there inspirational quotes that you appreciate which you can share with us you know what I'll do with that is I will read, I have these um, epigraphs in the beginning of each section and I'll read a couple of them to you. So the beginning, uh, the opener to the book, to the survival section is from a, a, a poem called Swimming by Carl Phillips. An old map from when this place was first settled shows monsters everywhere once the shore gives out. And I wanted that, I love that quote so much because it, evokes you know what's unknown what's on the outer limits of a thing that we are familiar with and then we move into the depths and and so how do we confront those things where where do we find it within ourselves to do that um so that's actually really one of my favorite um quotes from the book and that's not my quote <laughs> that's inspirational actually i think yeah um and then i will read i think from the last from the flow section. Oh, I love this quote. It's a D.H. Lawrence quote from a poem called The Third Thing. So this is flow. Water is H2O, hydrogen two parts, oxygen one, but there is also a third thing that makes it water and nobody knows what it is. <laughs> Which I just think is great. Um, you know that you know the, the components that make it up, but also what is the thing that makes it water? You just it's hard to describe. And so I love that mystery of it. All right. Well, I can't thank you two enough. And this was such a pleasant way to spend an evening in a crazy world. Um, and I think that Tom was right in his introduction that you've made us all salivate isn't quite the right word. I don't know what <laughs> the metaphor would be for salivate that has to do with swimming, but um, to feel the water again and um, to get into the flow. Um, it is a very calming thing. I did a slight bit of neuroscience writing in my time, and there's something about the rhythmic movement of your limbs that's um, restorative and also regenerative of your, of your limbs.
a spinal cord injury, moving your limbs and coordination over and over and over regenerates some connections. So I think there is a whole lot of physiological evidence that maybe we haven't even touched on um, that swimming can soothe us all. So I want to thank you again. And I just want to say Brenda Khan asked if we, if Bonnie and I could take a contingent of Berkeley City Club members to the Bay. Oh, <laughs> I'll do it. Sure, why not? Yeah. Let's In do contrast, it. I'd like to invite both of you when we reopen our pool to swim and test both our pool and our locker room. <laughs> I would be happy to do that. Let yeah, me just sure. say that. I am raising my hand right now. <laughs> well, I, both of these women have websites. There's ways to get in touch with them. Um, do support our local bookstores by getting Bonnie's book. And I, again, thank you so much. And we had a very nice crowd tonight from all over the place. And I'm so grateful for this evening. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Bye. Leave. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know.